it was a real regime almost. Oh, hell no. They're talking about me. All I needed was one ball. The science of training. And I know you don't think it's a sport. What do you recommend eating before the workout and after a workout? Yeah, uh, you see, uh, I have three phases in a day for all of us. For you, if uh, you're going to look at, uh, ask me for advice for a big Rami, Mr. Olympia, or, you know, for a bikini girl that is competing. What do you want to accomplish during a day in a 24 hour period? You have a possibility to maybe uh, build more muscle. Uh, and lose some fat and then maintain, okay? If you're happy with your body, you just want to maintain it, that's a maintenance phase. If you still have some body fat to lose, okay, we're going to have a fat burning phase. And then if you need a, a muscle to build, we're going to have an anabolic phase. So how do you do this? Like I said, each meal, every three hours, you can do something to your body. You know, first thing in the morning when I wake up, Oh, that's perfect opportunity to lose some body fat because you have overnight fasting. You have no nutrients in your in your bloodstream, really. And then if you do the cardiovascular type of training that uses fatty acids as energy, not glucose like a muscle chain, fatty acids, and you didn't eat any fat, right? Then only fatty acids that can be used would be your, your body fat. So you're going to initiate fat burning. Great, this is my fat burning phase. They can maybe re be repeated one more time during a day, or I know that Jay Cutler used to do even three uh, you know, cardio sessions. So cardio, purpose of cardio, or no uh, on empty stomach, would be to burn body fat. Great, but the remainder, we need to maintain amount of calories, and amount of protein to maintain our muscle, so we don't catabolize it. We do want to catabolize body fat, but we don't want to catabolize muscle. So you have a frequent uh, protein uh, uh, meals, like I said, and if you listen to me, I also do uh, essential amino acids and glutamine in between meals to make sure that I have all the building material. But now I choose my energy nutrient, okay? Uh, I am ectomorphic. I don't need to lose anything. I am a hard gainer. I can give you both carbohydrates and fat in each meal. Those are the lucky ones. Okay, you are endomorphic or you are, you are prone to uh, put the body fat. No, I won't give you. I will give you just good fats and I would uh, give you the caloric requirement. I would give you a deficit. I would give you as required because you already created fat loss initially. So now I give you good fats, uh, avocado, maybe whole eggs, uh, red, red meat, uh, or olive oil, avocado, oil, you know, good fats. Okay, nuts of any kind. Next meal, okay, for three hours, you again calculate how much protein, how much carbs you would need. Okay, this is a meal before the workout. Now, for a workout, we're going to use glucose. So carbohydrates would be beneficial. If your glycogen storage is not uh, you know, completely full, it's somewhat empty, this carbohydrate meal is going to give you enough slow-releasing uh from starchy complex carbohydrates, they have bones between a, a glucose molecules, slowly it's gonna break them up and it's not gonna you know, get that insulin spike. It's gonna slowly give you more carbohydrates into your bloodstream that you can use during a training. Now, during a training, you know, now this is my anabolic phase of a day. This is when I wanna insert everything into the muscle. This is when I do my famous pre, intra, post-workout uh, shakes. And, and idea with this is, I, I put pre-digested already in supplemental form. Uh, so your body doesn't have to bring it to the digestive system and break it down. All the uh, supplements that would make a difference, like a creatine, like a glutamine, uh, essential amino acids, BCA, a beta alanine, uh, carnitine, citrulline, everything that is beneficial, I would put in a pre-workout, uh, 30 minutes before a workout, and then inter-workout, uh, I would be sipping in between sets. So you uh, maintain a um, high uh, level of uh, circulating amino acids and a glucose. Okay, uh, so you need to put some carbohydrate source into the workout to maintain this high glycemia. And that carbohydrate is going to ensure release of insulin from the pancreas. And insulin is going to be in the blood. And blood is in, in the muscle. So every time you do any muscle contraction, it's uh, 
uptake of whatever is in this uh, blood straight into the muscle, guaranteed. This is what I say is guaranteed. I didn't have a university uh, study that I can prove this. Obviously, it would cost too much. But uh, uh, as I say, um, ton of theory doesn't equal uh, ton of uh, practice. You know, do the practice. And you know, there's actually people say one gram of practice is heavier than ton of theory. This is what I did in my Colosseum University with all the you know, pros, with all the amateurs. And then uh, I, do them, I, I make them do it without it. And then I make them do it with it. And the difference with my bonding. So to answer that, just completely a question. So inter-workout, I need some simple carbs with my essential amino acids, BCAs, and everything else. It just, the purpose of that is pushing into the muscle. Okay, post-workout, I will have a traditional post-workout shake with the easy absorbable whey protein that's gonna break down into amino acids within like 20 minutes. And now you need some kind of carbohydrates. I like to eat my carbs rather than, than drink it at that point because carbs are enjoyable. You know, proteins are not so good, good tasting, but the carbs, we all love. So you, at the post-workout shake, now you can have pancakes, you can have, um, you know, the, the uh, choice of, you know, fruit, uh, dates, bananas, uh, pineapple, uh, whatever. And they, they would say, meal, meal, but you don't want to fructose. Well, glycogen capacity uh, in, a, in a body is 70% muscle, 30% liver. So you still need to replenish liver glycogen anyway. So fructose is okay, you know, but majority should come from uh, uh, glucose sources. And then my next meal uh, would be typical uh, protein bodybuilding uh, meal, chicken and rice um, or a sweet potato, potato or whatever else. So you will have still uh, lean protein uh, and a complex carbohydrate. They're going to keep replenishing your glycogen for hours to come. After that, you don't really need any more of the carbohydrates. You can stick with just protein, protein and vegetables, protein, vegetables and fat depending on your uh, metabolism and, and uh, you know, your caloric intake in, in total. But anabolic phase during a training, that's the opportunity when you can shove everything in. And you see, the only thing, only time, and I, I, I might as well say it, hyperemia is increased blood flow to the muscle. Only happens during a training. So you or anybody else that is listening to this, right now you have a 10% of your blood in the muscle because you're not, not active and you have a five, six liters of blood. Only when you train with the weights, you know, in high intensity, 60 or 70% of that blood goes in the exact muscle if you're training chest. So that's only opportunity during a day when you have so much blood there. If blood is saturated, okay, with all these nutrients, right, it's saturated. And then you put that uh, insulin that is released because of carbohydrates. I'm not gonna say because you use insulin, but uh, you can uh, have endogenous insulin release. Insulin takes everything that is in the bloodstream and puts to the first available tissues and cells. Blood is in a muscle, working muscle, with the constant muscle contractions in, in uh, training. The only place that everything can go is only muscle tissue. This is why I do it. You know, because for me that makes perfect sense. And I like when a naysayer is saying, what are you talking you know, she, that's not true. If you have insulin released from your uh, blood, from your uh, pancreas, in any normal circumstance during a day, is released to do what? To take glucose out of the bloodstream to, you know, bring down the uh, normal blood sugar level because hyperglycemia is toxic. You know, it can create uh, retinopathy, neuropathy, all these kinds. So the reason why pancreas uh, release insulin is to Take it out, take it out, take it out. Well, now blood is in the muscle, working muscle, and that glucose can go straight into the muscle. Amino acids can go straight to the muscle, beta and citrine, l carnitine. Everything can be shoved in. That's the only opportunity during a day. And then I have a lot of people who say, yeah, but I don't do those inter-workouts. I don't believe in it. Okay, you don't have to believe it, but can you tell me why you don't believe it? You know, because for me, logical things should be done. If, if it makes sense, do it. And it's okay, uh, does it make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Well, why don't you do it? Well, my coach didn't tell me. Well, then talk to the coach and, and ask him, why not? 
a lot of coaches they suggest uh, carb cycling, um, doing carb cycling one day, no carbs at all one day, you know, heavy carbs. They, they, what do you think about that? Okay, so what is carb cycling for? That's when you're dieting and when you have to create the, the caloric deficit. So on the low carb days, you're going to be now caloric, calorically deficient, so you can burn, you know, more body fat. Okay, but then you're going to deplete the glycogen in this two days, three days, or four days of low carbs, and then he's going to give you one high carb day, too, because the glycogen is completely depleted, now you can be catabolic, so go on the higher carbs. I mean, I did this many times, of course, and uh, it's, a, it's a method that it works for sure, but uh, you see, uh, ideally, uh, I would like to create that caloric deficit uh, as least as possible. As we know, uh, we all have a certain uh, amount of metabolism. You have a basal metabolism, your physiological needs, and then additional what, what we do from exercise and uh, bringing it up. If you create great caloric deficit, like 1,000 calories or more, it's very likely you are going to burn muscle. You're going to be catabolic. Because let's say 1,000 calories is missing today. Okay, You have your protein, carbohydrates and fat, but let's say you're 1,000 calories deficient. Energy is going to have to find this 1,000 calories that is missing from your body. Okay, it's going to go possibly through carbohydrate sources, glycogen, okay, a fat source, body fat, or a, a protein source, muscle. So we would like to lose uh, from uh, fat. If it's 1,000 calories deficient, it's, uh, it's alarming for the body. You know, so it's not going to burn fat because fat is metabolically inactive tissue. It's going to take from the muscle. So for, for people that go dramatic caloric deficit in a low-carb days, they're going to burn muscle. So you have to be smart. You have to create maybe two, 300 uh, calorie deficient uh, day, and uh, then you can go low carbs, and you can burn some fat. But if you go to 1,000, now this is a danger waiting to happen. And your body's going to start shutting down metabolism because if you shut, you know, you burn the muscle, you're lowering your metabolic rate. So you are shutting down your metabolism. Then your body's going to need less and need less and need less. Your body is the biggest surviving mechanism. So it's always, it has to be logical. It has to make sense. Low carb days, okay. Uh, you can have a, a, a small caloric deficit. On the high carb days, usually they do the surplus of the calories because they're aiming those extra carbs to be pushed right back into the uh, glycogen storage. So I understand that. For me, ideal diet is when I don't have to do that dramatic uh, low carb days, high carb days, I would do somewhat lower on the body parts that maybe uh, don't require as much uh, energy and carbohydrates. And then uh, uh, bigger body parts, I would uh, give them higher. Okay, uh, I would much rather uh, give them the um, right amount of calories and carbs and everything and create the extra fat burning from extra cardio and keep their carbs as they need it. This is my method. Uh, but uh, it's the accepted method all over the world. I did it many times. Uh, I don't do it really right now so often because I get my guys in shape, like I was in shape uh, for me, and then I, I cruise uh, you know, through the whole season. You don't let yourself get fat, you know, so you are pretty much contest ready, you know, pretty much plus minus. You know, you can up the calories a little bit and then you just uh, can easily peak for any show.